How's it going? Um, and if people people join, then that is fine. Are we ready, Neil? We are ready. Okay. Uh, as chair of the Hopkinton Economic Development Committee, due to the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis and in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this committee is authorized to meet electronically. Please note there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the order, this is to confirm that we are A, providing public access to the meeting by phone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing the Zoom platform for this meeting. All members of the committee have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during the meeting through the Zoom platform and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, participate in this meeting through dialing the following phone number, 1-646-558-8656 and meeting ID 845-4293-F1647 or by clicking on the website address uh, that's in the notice. B, providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of how to access the meeting using Zoom and instructions are provided on the town of Hopkinton's website at www.hopkinton-nh.gov and on the town of Hopkinton's Facebook page. Uh, C, providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please call 603-746-8256 uh, D, adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, we will adjourn and have it rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting are done via roll call vote. Uh, let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during the meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Um, I will go first. Uh, Stephen Whitley and I am alone um, in this room. Uh, Meredith? Meredith Lee, I am alone in this room. Okay. Jim? I'm Jim Fredema and I'm alone in this room. Okay. Andrea? Andrea Folsom, I'm alone in this room. Okay. And Anna? Anna Wells and I am not alone in this room. <laughs> okay. I'm joined by a six-year-old and a dog. <laughs> oh, a new dog. That's right. Yeah. Um, he's so cute, right there. Oh, nice. That's a good size one, too. Ooh. Yeah, he's big. He's so sweet. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> he's, he's that was awesome. excellent. Um, so I just want to note that uh, we are missing uh, Tom Congoran, Greg Sagris, and Eric Newman. Um, Matt Monahan is also here. Hey, Matt. <laughs> as well as Neil. Um, okay, so we're going to. Uh, dive right into the agenda. Uh, first up is uh, review and approval of the last meeting, the minutes. Uh, those were circulated by Neil um, with the agenda. Uh, so I trust that everyone had an opportunity to take a look at those. Uh, does anybody have any um, edits to those minutes? Okay, seeing none, I'll take a motion and a second to approve those minutes. This is Jim, I'll move to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, all those in favor, Stephen, uh, yes. Meredith? Yes. Okay, Jim? Yes. Uh, Andrea? I abstain, I wasn't here last okay. meeting. And Anna? Yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> great. All right, uh, next order of business is um, to just follow up on our uh, EDC visioning session. Um, and I, Meredith and I were emailing uh, a little bit uh, earlier today, or maybe it was yesterday, I don't remember. All the days just, they're all one day now. Um, but uh, Meredith suggested that we um, talk a little bit about kind of where we left off and maybe do a little more brainstorming um, and so Meredith, if it's okay with you, I'm going to, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know what the end point is that you'd like to get to 
tonight. So I'm going to leave that to you. But when you get there, um, let let me know, um, and then we can carry on with the meeting. Okay, that sounds good. Hi, everyone. Okay. Um, so yeah, I I didn't get really as far as I had hoped. I got COVID. So um, yeah, I know. <laughs> so I'm just like behind a week. And also though, I think that it would be helpful to kind of just recap where we left off to see if we can narrow down any decisions or come up with new ideas. Um, I know not everyone was present at the last meeting and I think that we had a lot of good stuff and so I can go over that, but I'm not sure we like nailed it or we're like super excited about any one direction. And so, yeah, I just thought maybe we could have a discussion about that. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna go over my notes. Um, and I guess, okay, real quick, as a reminder, we wanted to come up with a tagline for the EDC, but on behalf of the town, right? So not like necessarily the town's tagline, but the EDC's tagline that is representative of the town. So it's like a twofold. Does everyone still agree? Or I'm seeing a lot of heads, but feel free to join in. Yes. Yeah. That's what Sounds I remember good. too. Yeah. I, I missed the conversation last <laughs> meeting, which I'm super sad about. Um, and honestly, when I had sent in my suggestions, I think I had been thinking along the line of a tagline for the town. So I apologize because I had, I had completely misunderstood. No, that. I, I, Andrew, I think that's, it's kind of hard because it, it's hard to separate them at the same time. Um, but, you know, from, if we do it from the EDC's point of view, then we can have it be a little bit more business oriented rather than speaking to necessarily just people who live here right sort of i mean i think that was the intention that we were going to go with D does that still resonate with everyone do you think that that's the direction we should go i Are like that same? idea because i think that's kind of what I'll, I'll speak for myself i mean that's what i envisioned the visioning to be is is you know uh some sort of a statement from the edc um a business oriented one you know that's kind of the charge of the edc right is to mm -hmm. kind of promote uh business development and and i you know i just think it's maybe maybe it isn't but i just think it's easier for us to come up with it rather than it be a town-wide thing um but yeah. i i get that you know there's probably a flip side to that coin and you know there's some merit to doing it town-wide but i prefer the, the kind of the EDC perspective on it. I think they can be related and overlap, you know, like kind of concentric circles, just kind of overlapping a bit um, because just kind of stepping back, I think, A, the things we touched on kind of focused on for lack of a better description, live, work, play, and then B, we kind of recognize that that's kind of what draws in prospective businesses. So I think it can be it, it's okay if it's a little different, but understanding that it's okay too, and probably will touch on if there's a larger town-wide vision, I think anyway. <clears throat> yeah. I think it, I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense to me, Meredith. I also actually prefer that idea because then it's not like the EDC is trying to speak on behalf of the town to encapsulate the entire thing. We're just super focused on our, our what our kind of mission is. Right. So right. that makes complete sense. I like that actually. I actually like that even better. Okay. That's good to know. I, and then at least we have a, like a, a, a base and we can take it further down the road. Um, if maybe we feel like, you know, the EDC wants to present to, you know, the select board, like, hey, we need a tagline for the town, a new brand. I, I don't know. I'm just saying, but yeah, it just feels like it's something that we can accomplish 
faster and, you know, have it be building blocks. Um, so, okay. So here are some things that we came up with. Um, and now having that discussion, I'll be curious to hear what you all think. Um, so we we're going to do, we talked about our own version of like stay work play, but needing to change that because we don't have really places to stay. So maybe that's more like a, a live work play, something like that. Um, two villages, one heart, which is so cute. <laughs> it's just so sweet. Um, but is that too cutesy for our you know purposes um the crossroads of new england which as a recap i don't know if i'm like maybe I, i'll just read them all first um okay live work learn small town feel big connections home sweet hopkington which was cute um convenience community character that was Greg's that seemed to get a lot of, uh, it, it seemed to go over well. And then small town character conveniently connected. And I think that's, yeah. I mean, there's a few other like miscellaneous notes like thrive in Hopkinton, livelihood, vibrant, um, live, recreation, blank so based on that does anything stick out to anyone oh boy <laughs> I mean I think they're all so good like they're really all are really good and I think any one of them yeah would be really great so it's I think it's going to be really hard to narrow it down because I think they really are all pretty great yeah I know that you know, Crossroads of New England, some <laughs> feedback, and, and I think this actually came from you, which was good feedback, is that, does that sound like promoting everybody else rather than us? So that was just some feedback there. Um, uh, what but yeah, sort of the idea that like, if you live here, you can go lots of other places, but that's not like selling us. That's like I'm kind of so selling- convenient for people but that's not like what we're about right right it's really kind of i think it misses the heart of our community significantly um i love it but it doesn't just say like we're also you know a community it just is like okay we're this place on the map that you can go to all these other different places and not want to be here that's the vibe i get from it does everyone agree could we maybe like cross that one off the list okay I, th I agree with that and i think that i mean if that's kind of i wonder if we could also cross off small town character conveniently connected because that yeah. seems kind of in the same vein I don't, yeah. I don't maybe i'm i don't know if other people read that one the same as the crossroads of new I england but there's a lot of words like i think it's the meaning is better yeah but it's, it's too many words hi, uh -oh. hi. sadly <laughs> Hi. yeah i would i would agree that it's just a little wordy a little too much um i i don't know yeah okay should we scrap it it's gone all right i mean i think a lot of since i wasn't here last time i didn't get to hear these phrases over and over again and i will say the longer ones are just like yeah right through and yep. they're not like I, i'm trying to think of what just stuck with me from that big list. Yeah. Uh, but I almost feel like I need to look at them. Another one in that vein would be small town feel, big connections. Yeah, I agree. It feels wordy. really on the nose, <laughs> like a little too on the nose. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Okay. I think that's a good assessment. <laughs> so I, okay, so some ones, here, here's what's left. Um, our own variation of stay, work, play, which is yet to be found, which might be something that we should discuss this evening, just so we have that option. Um, 
Two Villages, One Heart, Home Sweet Hopkinton, Convenience Community Character. Those are all good options. Do we yeah. have the, do, uh, where, what had Thrive in it? Did, did we, we come up with a phrase? Words like Thrive in Hopkinton was one that was sort of at the bottom of our list. I think that we came up with at the end. So okay. I could add that, you know, Thrive in Hopkinton. Then some other words we have were like live, recreation, livelihood, vibrant, mm -hmm. live, play, work. It was, it was live, kind of coming out of that. I had live, work, learn in my notes kind of along those lines. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have that too. Sorry, I did not read that. Yes. Live, work, learn. I'm a little thrown off by the learn. Hmm. I feel like it's better for, you know, if we were educational, a college or academia. About, uh, Aren't we selling like the, the education? To... Sorry, go ahead, Anna. Sorry. Um, what about something like grow or thrive instead of the learn? Yeah, I think that would be um, grow, thrive. So live, work, thrive is an option. Live, work, grow. I, I um, know I had sent in grow just because I'm, I think that just the word grow, it feels like can be very business oriented. I mean, that's oftentimes the whole point of a business is to, to grow and grow well. Um, right. and grow for a long time, but you can also grow your family, grow your community, you can grow a what life about, here. What about live, thrive, grow? I feel like you would grow before you would thrive. Live, grow. I'd say the same thing. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Live. Good job. Live, grow, thrive. Steven, you were going to say something too that I, I definitely wanted to get your point about the learn yeah i mean i i when i heard the when i hear the learn part you know to me it means that we're selling the fact that you can come here and your family can get a really excellent public education um and maybe maybe i'm reading into that a little too much but that's kind of what jumped out to me by including learn yeah um, but i guess that's already kind of covered by living living there so it maybe is a little repetitive i think that it's i would personally like a grow or a thrive where it could be a little more encompassing to it's not so specific to the schools mm -hmm. meaning so you know learn to me just says automatically our schools which is a wonderful thing and why so many people come here However, it does it take away from the business side of things. You know, I mean that I feel like somebody who owns a business, it would have to say to them, okay, well, I'll move there because my kids will have a good education. I, it might take away, whereas if we used a word like thrive or grow, it really it embodies it for multiple people in different parts and uh, times in their life. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, yep. Something like grow your life, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I'll write that down. So, um, so I'm gonna. Do we cross off live, work, learn, learn specifically, but go something in that direction? Okay. Let me ask you this: Home Sweet Hopkinton. I love it, but I'm wondering if it's a little too uh, cliche. Hey, Barry. Yeah. <laughs> Which we're not. We're just not. Yeah. Is, is it too Hallmark video or movie? It is a little bit, but it's so good. <laughs> it, it is, is good. really good, though. It yeah. is really good. Just would that I'd be. Like, I'd like movie rights to it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> movie rights for hometown Hopkinton. If if I were to have a choice between Home Sweet Hopkinton, which is very good, and Two Villages One Heart, 
what would you choose? I'd go two villages, one heart, but I just really like that. Yeah, just where I, I would too. Probably two villages. Okay. All right. Because I think that, I mean, I, I, I like that one too, because I do think that that's something unique about us. I mean, it's confusing for like anyone trying to send anything to us ever. Yes. Um, but I think it makes us really unique. Yeah. Right? I, I like it. It says in a roundabout way, you know, oh, this is a place that has two villages so it's it's big and it's it kind of says thriving and growth in all of those just by opportunity yeah yeah opportunity that's what I pick up too Mm -hmm. great word opportunity yeah oh I've not just got one place to you know expand but two places and Mm -hmm. um that's that's a nice draw so while at my first glance, I was like, oh gosh, that might be too cute. It really isn't. I mean, and it, and it has a lot of heart, you know, behind it as well, which I think is important for our community. Um, you know, I think it'd be a miss by not um, including, you know, recognizing that. So, all right, I'm going to type into the chat. Is that allowed? Yep. Okay. Um, a couple of the ones that stand out so everyone can just see them and um, real quick. So two villages, one heart. Uh, we still have convenience, community, character. And I'm just going to circle the, the popular ones. And then we have some sort of variation on live, oops, uh, live, work, thrive. We have live, grow, thrive. Uh, Live, work, grow. We have thrive in Hopkinton. We have grow your life. And that's all. Um, let me go up here. Do you want me to give you some of the words we had come up with as well? Just go over those to see if anything pops out. So we have, um, uh, it was a, you know, in quotes, this is my town. Uh, grow, give community lifetime, convenience community character community, close-knit, active slash thriving, opportunity, open space, uh, best kept secret, convenient, comfortable, safe, uh, rural refuge, vibrant, walking tookie, if I could read my um, amenities right here. Um, So sort of like that was off of, you know, we have everything that a big city has, but with a small town feel. Uh, You don't need to go anywhere else. Uh, Community focused, two villages, one heart, home sweet home, nowhere else I'd rather be, and pride. And then I do have in circle business plus family as where we need to find that sweet spot. I really like the first three that you typed. I think those are the strongest ones that we've been talking about. And I, I like the live, work, thrive better than, I like thrive being in there. I like those three words being in there in some yeah. combination. I To me, that sends a, a stronger message than if you include grow. Um, but I, I know that others, you know, feel that that speaks to an, an entre- entrepreneurial kind of spirit. Um, for prospective businesses. Mm-hmm. That's but if really thrive, good. I mean, is that that much different than grow? I think you would want to thrive. It's like after you grow and then you're thriving business. That's really <laughs> what you want. That is very well said and really good feedback, Stephen. I think, you know, 
my my only thought about like live work thrive versus two villages one heart is the three words are the state motto right live work play or live wait what is it stay work play and so doing something totally different from that I think really helps us to stand out mm -hmm. while I love it there is that thought that no one else can say two villages one heart just to complicate the situation <laughs> it's like but, Henniker when they say there's only one Henniker right <laughs> right right. So, right yeah that's exactly I kind of right. like the two villages one heart personally um when I think villages, I think thrive. I think because my brain goes to the mixed use, the walkability and those things. But mm. um, so that's kind of what I think of when I think of that. But they're related, like the, you know, the, the one heart piece too. I think the word village sort of is synonymous with community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somehow versus like town, a village, you think of, right. of people really working together and being together and having a strong community. That's really beautiful. Um, and it says thrive. I mean, I think that it's two, it's not just one. So in a roundabout way, it says, you know, thrive and grow, not super directly. Um, it says opportunity. I think that's definitely something we came up with. I'm just writing some of these notes down. Um, what are other thoughts? Well, I, I like the um, two villages, one heart, except for the fact that it really doesn't apply to Hopkinton from an economic development perspective. Because you're, all your development's gonna be in Kentuckook, all your business development's gonna be in Kentuckook, and all your housing is probably gonna be in Kentuckook. Mm -hmm because there's just really no um, appetite for business development or housing development in Hopkinton. So what's the point of highlighting the Hopkinton village versus the Kentuckook village if all your activity is gonna be in Kentuckook? I mean, I, I like the way it sounds, but, but practically speaking, it doesn't work. But if we were talking about like uh, Hart's Corner, that's not considered Kentuckook. Oh, it's more Kentuckook than Hopkinton because you're going to use the Maple Street corridor to get there. It's, I mean, it's, it used to be called West Hopkinton. Like it was its own yeah. center of, of, you know, it was its own little village, West Hopkinton. Well, it was West Hopkinton because of the factory or the mill or whatever and the post yep. office that was there at one time. Yep. People still talk about West, Ho West Hopkinton, but there is really no West Hopkinton village. No, that's true. Right, but there is opportunity that's not just within the precinct of Kentuckook. Here, here's some- No, but I'm talking about, you gotta look at the, the, what you're talking about for development, which is the corridor between uh, exit six and, and uh, uh, Maple Street going over to the other side of the corridor, which is 202 and nine. So that's where all your, at this point, it, it would appear that that's where your development is going to occur. It's not going to be in Hopkinton. So I think that we've, and we've talked about this here before, and, and Matt has explained this to us really well, that housing is part of economic development. And so if we're talking about, I mean, we're, we're the EDC and we want to come up with a tagline that speaks to economic development, but, but which also represents the Daddy. entire town. So I think, I think highlighting that we have this center of commerce, which is one of our villages, and then our other village, which has a little bit of commerce, but is highly residential. Like it, it, to me, it says there's something here for everybody that you have these diverse options in our town. And no matter who you are, where you're coming from, we'll welcome you into our heart. Like, that's what it says to me. Um, and that we will care for you and we will help you grow and thrive. Like that, and 
so I, I think while I think you're I think you're right, Jim, that like it's from a purely business standpoint, no, like one village, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Although there's some oppor- there's a little bit of opportunity in Hopkinson Village. I mean, it's it's underdeveloped. It's like there are there are opportunities there. Um, but you're right. Like it it if we're talking purely where you can locate your business. Yeah, it's not going to be Hopkins Village. It's going to be Kentucky. Um, But I think it it speaks to the idea that there is something for everybody here um, in these across these two villages. That's my take on it. I'd rather use live, work, thrive. That's more generic, but it it, it gives you much much broader range. And you know, we, we talked at. Briefly, I think I mentioned at the uh, last meeting we had the opposition to splitting the uh, subdividing, subdividing the Drescher property, which the zoning board turned down, which would have been a perfect opportunity for a small multi-use um, housing development somewhere to Smithfield. And some of the neighbors there didn't want it. And I, and I think that's the problem you're gonna have on some of this again. Yeah, I was 100% one of those, you know, neighbors that was not for that for a number of reasons, Um, mostly because it wasn't being presented to us as an opportunity for development. It was being, that was, that was uh, very unclear and it felt like um, what was being presented to us was more or less a lie that it was going to be for the family to keep the land, but yet they had, um, you know, all the, you know, the realtor are there and it was just a lot of mixed signals. Also, I mean, I think every single one of the neighbors said that putting in a development that front driveway would access be in a school zone where already the traffic is so dangerous is not a good idea. So, I mean, are we, I mean, are we, is this tagline, does it need to be so practical and concrete? I mean, I, I think of it as kind of being something that catches somebody's interest and then they start doing a little more digging and they like what they see and then they do a little more and do a little more. And so I guess I don't see it as so concrete. Um, You know, I think you want to leave some room for imagination when people read it. That's why live, thrive, live, 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 work, thrive works better. We are though pigeonholing ourselves into just sort of copying what the state is doing by doing something like that, which if we're not going to provide it needs to be a little like esoteric, right? A little mysterious. Um, it needs to pull people in. I feel like everyone knows stay, work, play, where you know it's just gonna get lost in the in the same redundant. It's just gonna feel very redundant. I do want to say Tom added into the chat. Um, my thought would be live, work, thrive in two villages. So a blend of the two. You know, and that that is um, a little wordy in my opinion, but also a nice, um, you know, a a nice blend of the two for sure. Um, Well, I'll just again say that that's fine, except that I think it's a myth with, with respect to the Hopkinton village. And there's okay. just, there's just I, I don't know where you would put a mixed use development there for housing or business. I mean, it's gonna be just a scattered development, a house here, a house there, just as it is now. Yeah. So I, I, don't, know, I don't know what it is you're trying to sell people on, unless you're trying to sell, upsell, that you can live in Hopkinton in the rural area and, and, and uh, feel like you're out in the country, but just minutes away from everything else. I think that is very appealing to many people. I think that is, um, I think that's extremely appealing 
and it leaves it open. I, I don't think it's misleading by any means saying that. It doesn't, it doesn't have to say two villages, one heart, you get to develop anywhere you want to. You know, I mean, it, there are some restrictions here about what's available. Um, play devil's advocate when I first moved here more or less back here and um, I had a meeting with someone from Two Villages Art Society which actually there's that. Um, she had said to me uh, that regarding the chamber, I just feel like Hopkinton's really underserved and it makes me sad that it always feels really forgotten. So feedback from someone who is new to the town, establishing themselves here, who lives in Hopkinton, but works in Kentuckook, that was feedback for the chamber that it needs to be more included in everything that's going on. Well, I think that's really interesting. I, I, um, two points. One, I think it's it's very telling to me that name, the two villages art, was crowdsourced. So they did a poll um, of I don't know how many responses they got, but I mean dozens, dozens, um, and that was the name that they ended up choosing. Um, so to me, that's that's maybe not fully representative, but in some way, there are people out there who want that spirit reflected. Um, so thank you for mentioning that. Um, and then the other thing um, I have forgotten. So I'm gonna try to wrap my brain and come back to it. Hmm. That's really interesting. I did not know that. Um, do you think that it's a problem if our tagline were to be that and there's a business? No, no, I don't. I think there's synergy there. I think that's okay. not a problem at all. So Meredith, what would you do to fix that problem? Oh, I remembered what I was going to say. I'm sorry. Come back to that. My, I was going to say uh, there's a, there's a little bit of a philosophy in my mind around picking this tagline, if you will, um, that should be a little aspirational, I think. And, and if we're talking about, I mean, I think we don't, we do have two villages. And if we're talking about, if, if our tagline only is referring to Kentuckook Village, that doesn't, that also doesn't seem, um, like that doesn't seem representative. So I think, you know, if like it's hard to articulate what I'm trying to say, but the aspirational piece is if if we as an economic development committee feel that there ought to be more opportunities in Hopkinton Village so for how development. Would you, how, would you, how would you fix that? I, I I don't have the tools right here in front of me, but I think. I think there's movement in in some ways, partially because the Hopkinton Village precinct is talking about, you know, coming under the town planning and zoning. And I mean, we're seeing um, new owners at an, a new name for the Hopkinton Village store. We have, um, I think, probably the most successful restaurant at the lake house in maybe a decade or more. Um, there are, I don't know, I just, I feel like, I feel like there are, they're small. They're, of course they're small because it is the historic village. And, and I, I also think it should stay that way. Um, that's important. My, but, point is, my point is where does the economic development occur in Hopkinton Village? given its present configuration, predominantly along Main Street. Isn't there a vacant storefront right across from the village store? Where Bella's used to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's the Antiquarian Society. There's also a, vet, a very successful vet in mm -hmm. Hopkinton. Um, there used to be a bed and breakfast, which what's to say that couldn't happen. I think it's, it's going to look different then can all that surplus land that we've talked about around exit four that while it's not rising up to a, the priority status of other things like it's there like there are opportunities there and 
I think it's all of this movement that needs to all kind of build in the same direction to make anything happen. Mm -hmm. And it's to be part of that. Yeah. It, it's not going to be the same, but there is opportunity there. And also, you know, I just think about, okay, you know, 20 years, Maple Street Corridor is done, right? <laughs> it's there. What's next? I mean, we, and that's our job is to, you know, not stop and not just say, oh, there's no opportunity. So we're, you know, nowhere to go from here. I mean, who knows? Just Any one of those homes could be converted into something very cool. I don't know. I, I would just kind of go ahead, Matt. I was going to say, I just, the way I think of these types of um, um, phrases and things is I think what we're trying to do is basically give a quick snapshot of the town that makes it attractive as a destination. Right. Um, and I do like the aspirational aspect of that too. Right. Because you want to build up that you you kind of want to get somebody to say ooh and follow up and, and dig a little deeper and, and all that. So I know it's not like a, a specific pick this one or that one, but I think that's it. Is how do you define um, with a snapshot? Because I know, like for instance, Suncook with Alan Son and Pembroke, they both use um, where where friends and rivers meet to define Suncook. And, and that's kind of one of their phrases that they really use. Good. And it, it conjures up all kinds of things to different people. But to me, that's a snapshot of what they see Suncook as. And you're like, ooh, Rivers, what do you do there? You know, and, and you kind of like, it, it's, it's, it's a snapshot. It's quick and it generates interest. And, and it has I feeling. Guess, the feeling. Yeah, I think there's a feeling in there. We, I think, yeah. There Definitely is. I will say that Suncook just moved a notch up in my. Uh, <laughs> like I might actually go look and see where it is located in New Hampshire. <laughs> I'm well acquainted. <laughs> so, I, I just wanted. I just. Tim, I just wanted to say that you know I don't. I don't disagree with any of the assessments that you've made about development in Hopkins, and I don't. I don't think. I don't see this tagline as needing to accurately represent, you know, the last 10 or 15 years of business development in that village. Um, and, and so those problems, they do exist. Um, they, we should maybe at a different meeting, try to brainstorm about what we can do to promote development specific to that village. Um, but I really like the idea of this tagline evoking a feeling and being aspirational. Um, and because I think that's what's going to inspire people um, or intrigue people, maybe inspire is too strong, maybe intrigue people to look a little deeper. Um, and until there is that one development that clears those hurdles that you mentioned in Hopkinton, and that is going to happen at some point. I mean, I, I hope uh, you know, somebody is going to, you know, crack the code, so to speak, and figure it out. Um, and that hopefully can be a domino and lead to, you know, further mixed use development in that village. Um, but I, 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 I just, I like the idea of, I like the idea of saying to someone, you know, there are two villages that make up this town and they have different characteristics, but we're all part of the same community and we have different attributes that we offer to that community. Um, and I think that's part of selling the town to a prospective uh, a business owner. Well said, I'm just writing these notes down. Yeah, Jim, I think that you bring up a lot of really good points and I, I thank you because I don't think that we would have just had this is sort of that robust conversation that I felt that we were missing last time that I'm, I'm really grateful to you for sparking and, you know, in, you know, sharing your thoughts. Um, because in many ways we 
you know, from the notes I just wrote down, we really just did a lot of defining. And there was also some, um, there's like conviction here, which I think is really important when talking about a tagline. Um, so that, that was all very good. Um, sorry. Just, I, I was just gonna say one thing too. I mean, the, the space between what, what the, the villages um, one would describe and, and what Jim is pointing out, that almost becomes an area and like Stephen was saying, where we need to work. And that kind of, you know, how do we make for redevelopment in, in both villages and, and things like that? I think it, it gives us a measuring stick. Yeah. To maybe to address the issue that Jim's pointing out. Absolutely. Now, you know, it would be, you know, wrong of us on the website to say all this land in Hopkinton, um, you know, we can't do that, but we intrigued him enough to go to the website and learn, okay, well, this is where you could develop and this is where you can live. So, um, you know, that would not be the right thing to do by any means. Um, when, where I does at, when I look at the draft uh, strategic uh, economic development strategic plan. One of the things that comes to mind is is that we're focusing mostly on the Maple Street corridor. Mm -hmm. At what point, Matt, do we put together some maps that show the actual land that's available for development, either business development or housing development? Mm. So I'm glad you uh, brought that up because. I was talking to um, Mike this afternoon about a few things, um, some build out analysis and some other types of things that we can do. Um, and we, are, is everybody familiar with the DOT's UPW, U, Unified Planning Work Program, UPWP program? Basically what they do is they, they provide money for all kinds of transportation stuff, some of which is planning. Um, and Mike was thinking we could um, use some of that money to do some analysis, but also to look at the, you know, um, the villages and do some build out analysis work kind of to that end to kind of get a better understanding of how do we build out. And I just want to bring up Alan's son again, because one of the things that years ago, the planning board did, they didn't really have an EDC. So they kind of were lifting both of those um, things. They said, Hey, are, they kind of looked at what they had. They had um, Bear Brook State Park, and then kind of to the northwest of there, they had, you know, kind of the, the large lot homes and, and things like that. Then they had Suncook Village and then Route 28. And then when you look a little deeper, then you overlay kind of the flood issues and things like that, and where their sewer and water is. And they realized that, hey, Suncook Village is, um, a, it represents a lot of the space where the development has historically occurred. B, we could steer it there and we've got all this infrastructure there, so infill. So what they did is they created an infill development district that kind of brought together the mixed use and um, could get some more parcels out of that. Um, and th this kind of like what brought them the, um, the redevelopment of the mill that they just approved. That was like 10 years in the making to get to that point. They put that infill in place and just kind of poking around, going through their stuff. They they kind of actually kind of knocked some dust off a rock in a way and got the thing rolling. And then they updated the ordinance yet again. So it took about 10 years for them to see the development, but that's where I think a build out analysis can help is you can look at that and see how does it build out now? And then you kind of look at where we're, we're going, like, you know, with this, and, um, and say, we want to see if we can foster more development and redevelopment. Can we get a little more density in there? Do we want a little more density in there? And I think that's where the build out helps and the UPWP money can help on the transportation side of that. Um, not to get too much into the strategic plan thing, but we actually have a, uh, an engineer that we use for a lot of our um, like a transportation planning type stuff on call at the planning commission. And we'll just, Mike's like, hey, we can just pay Mike, Mike Fignelli, our, our engineer, to do some analysis under UPWP. 
So it wouldn't even come out of, you know, the town's EDC budget. It, it's a good way to, to get that going. And he's really good. He used to work for the city of Concord and I work with him in, in, in Pembroke and Chichester. So he's, he's got, he's a, an engineer with a good planning perspective, which can be helpful in, in those areas. I, I want to, I just want to suggest that we, we maybe <coughs> keep that part of the discussion for later in the meeting because we are going to talk about the strategic plan. I understand the context of why you brought it up, Jim, but you know, I want I want to make sure we work through the visioning and before we transition to uh, the strategic plan. Yeah, and I think that's the struggle is the visioning part of it because you've got to incorporate some of it in the reality of your environment. And yeah, totally. We need to decide what we mean by economic development. Is it housing? Is it is it multiple multifamily housing? Is it apartments? Uh, we've made a couple of recommended changes or in the process of making some changes to the table of uses uh, that will allow some additional develop, development in certain districts uh, that's mostly housing related. Uh, but you still have all the, the business activity, which is what's going to drive your growth and build your tax base without increasing uh, disproportionately the cost of services to the taxpayers. Right. Because, because, because that's gotta be a factor in there too, because you can't price yourself out. Right. Because you send yourself in the opposite direction. One interesting aside, just for a moment, is that I follow the real estate uh, listings. Uh, today, I looked at the Bean Group's listings. There are only eight condo or single family homes listed for sale in Hopkinton. I don't think that's num that number has been that low in 20 years. Wow. Only eight. And, and I think there were six real estate uh, land only listings, most of which are um, effectively a single family location uh, for a single family house. And um, that's also, I think one of the lowest I've seen in a long, long time. And what's selling has sold for substantially more than it was selling for. Um, in 2019, for the reval, people were concerned that their property values had gone up. Pretty much what we've seen is between 30 and $150,000 is the sale price above the, that assessed value. So it's really amazing what things are selling for and how quickly they're moving. I get an update every time something sells and um, they're not staying on the market very long. Some hardly hit the market and um, there's bidding wars um, right Nathan, away. Is, is that 30 to 150 above the reval assessment? Yes. Wow. Very rarely do you wow. see something close. Everything is, is run. And I would say single family homes are probably 50 to, to 100 for the most part above the, the, the new assessed value, the one that's only a year old. Some of those property buyers are going to be shocked almost to a heart attack when they get their first tax bill because the listing cards would show what the taxes were uh, at, at the old level. And now if the house is sold for 50 or 75,000 more, they're going to see a tax increase of 30 or 40% over what they thought they were going to pay when they bought the house. Right. But the, the assessed value doesn't change for five years. The, the values don't change when something sells. Well, it will in the course of the um, updated appraisals, because you're going to be getting market appraisals on an ongoing basis. I mean, we, know. Don't, it's, we don't do it. It's not a static thing. It's not everything's done every five years or every 10 years. It's done over on a rolling basis. And getting or, updated. Right. But each each year of the five years, it's only um, data data, and actually physical th changes. The, the statistical tables only change every five years. So the values will be based on the 2019 and 18 sales, not on these new sales until 2024 when it's redone. But the people who bought based on 2017 or 18 tax bills are going to see us sharp increase with your reevaluation, re re reassessment. But anyway, that's an aside. The bigger, the bigger point was about how, how few houses are for sale. Uh, I think two years ago that most I saw out there was about 60 houses were for sale in Hopkinton. And it's been generally dropping down into the 30s and 40s. 
and in the last couple of weeks, it's gone right down to, to uh, as of today, six. So there's, uh, and, and there aren't, are not any large, there's no large, there are no large parcels for sale that could be developed into a, to a multiple housing. So I, I'm not sure where the growth is gonna come from. So what do you wanna get back to live, work, thrive or two villages, one heart? somewhere in between yeah um so i think that um you know it, i don't know if we put it up to a vote or if you know we're done with the conversation it's it's really it does anybody feel like they need more options um, can we talk about the convenience community character one because i like i like there are parts of that that i like and we haven't really talked about that much. Yeah. And I'm just curious if that's in the same conversation with these other two, or if we've kind of moved away from that. Yeah, I what know that it, that was a very popular one last time. Stephen, what is it again? What are the three words, please? It was convenience, community, character. I, I will say that was a popular one when we spoke um, last time. For me personally, this doesn't mean anything. I have a hard time like grasping it, if that, for lack of a better, like it just doesn't say anything to me. Um, but really neither does like any of the live, work, thrives. They just don't jump out at me as, intriguing um that one is but i don't know i i think i would prefer convenience community character over like a live work thrive i think but i still have a hard time it just doesn't like sing to me and be like oh that's what it means um mm -hmm. it really requires me to think about it and i'm never gonna do that so i'm just gonna like skip over it <laughs> you know that's just me but proceed I guess what was attractive to me about it, and that, that's a great point, Meredith. I mean, I think you're right that, you know, if you have to think about it too much, that maybe, you know, you've missed the mark a little bit. Um, to me, it, it, it speaks to, I don't know, like the, maybe in a more concrete way, the kind of characteristics that I think the town has to offer. Um, we've already talked about the convenience um, kind of descriptor a little bit, but this one, this one, I feel like is talking about the town itself and not saying, you know, we're close to other things that are great. Um, and then community, I think is kind of self-explanatory, uh, and character too. Um, but I, I do agree with you that, that the two villages, one heart kind of has the same sentiment, but in a more, appealing language. Maybe that's a, a good way to express it. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure we had a chance to talk about that one because that's the only one I think we haven't really spoken about so far. Yeah, I think that's really good feedback. You know, and I, I'm wondering too, if we could have a tagline, but then have a mission statement, right? And start to include some of these more concrete words. Um, so, you know, two villages, one heart, something, something for convenience, community character, you know, like we are, you know, um, uh, God, I'm, I'm going to mess this up, but like we are um, uh, driven to provide, you know, that's terrible. But you know what I mean? Like, then we build a mission statement out of some of those. Oh, just a thought. But. Or we just go with that one. <laughs> You had asked a second about, about, about a vote. And I, I think I would, if we're not in a rush to complete this, I mean, I would like, because I think much differently about these than at the last meeting, you know, the from one to the next, you know, my kind of sense of what I really like has changed quite a bit. And so I, I would kind of like to sit with it for a little while and also hope that um, we have a full board when we eventually do take a vote. 
because I know that uh, Eric and, and Greg are invested in this also, and it would be nice to allow them to have input and in, in a vote into this too. Yeah. Okay. I like that a lot. I think that's great. Does everyone agree with that? So what I'll do is, um, you know, I've taken notes from everyone and I'll put it into a document. I apologize in advance if I forget anything, but roundabout, I have a lot of notes about why we like two villages. <laughs> so I will, uh, but I also have, you know, convenience and also the, you know, live, work, play and Jim's really good feedback on that and such. So I will actually do that this time, send it to Neil, everybody can sit with it. And then we can just continue the conversation next time. I don't want to I'm just going to copy notes though. I'm not going to provide any sort of like sway at all. Everyone's. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you, Meredith. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great conversation. So thank, yeah, thank you, you all. again. Um, okay. So looking at our agenda, next up is the economic strategic plan. Um, and Neil circulated one and, and Matt, I assume that this came from, did you put that together? It's, it's Matt's. It's Matt's. Matt's it's, busy the, right. Sorry. it's the same one Matt had for last meeting. I recirculated okay. it. Sorry, Matt. I didn't, I didn't change it. I did not do anything to it. That's, um, that's okay. We can... oh, oh, oh. Hold on. Yeah, take tell, a second. Take a second. Tell me if you like it, and I'll tell you whether I did it or Matt did it. I will, no. yeah. Yeah. So actually, you know what, great, Neil, can you put that up on the screen to share I, it? I can. While, while Matt is wrangling. Um, and then we can all be looking at it as we chat about it. Okay, um, yeah, so I think on this, um, on this plan document, it's um, a list of things that kind of short uh, and, and long-term things that we can work on. Um, and I know in the, in the previous meeting, we had talked about Kind of taking our, our visioning exercise and then applying to it but i'm thinking if, if we if you guys are okay with it we can just kind of walk through it and see if there's anything you guys want to like or uh want to change or if you like it and and go through that process um sure and kind of push through with this because i think with this um and even you know kind of when you wrap up the visioning stuff too but a lot of it with this with this strategic plan we could be in a position where about, you know, next month we could have the economic chapter ready for you guys to look at on, on the planning board side for master plan. Um, it, you know, it, it would pretty much uh, get us close to being uh, done with that because all the, everything spins off from kind of how we lay out this plan of attack. <clears throat> um, and then I can kind of touch on those other things too, like what we just talked about before with the build out analysis um, and using and looking at kind of the, the charrette and kind of building that out using the UPWP money to do some of the transportation planning associated with that um, and kind of go from there. One thing I'd like to kind of throw out on the TIF side of things, I know we talked last time about kind of once we get through roughly mid-month January that I can start doing the follow-on like basic cold calls on, on the TIF committee membership. I'd also like to think about projects too, because this is kind of tied into stuff too. Um, it's tied into the strategic stuff. It's also kind of in a way tied into the vision, right? Like some of the stuff Jim was talking about, about where we can facilitate development um, and things like that. We may want to look at sewer and water. We may want to look at other things um, that could uh, come out of, out of the TIF process. So I guess kind of with those kind of floating in the background, if, if we could uh, walk through this and, and give me your, your take on uh, what we've got here for the potential strategic plan. <clears throat> um, so short term through 21, right? Uh, well, I think that's probably gonna be 22 now. Um, well, no, that could be through 21, um, through the end of 21, basically. Um, so mixed use development opportunities in uh, the commerce and community overlay district in West Hopkinton, um, along Maple and north of 2029 and 127 intersection. 
So specifically, that would involve uh, coordinate with Henniker um, and um, kind of their whole development um, committees and their board of selectmen um, related to that and specifically the 10 year plan, a project in the 10 year plan that's got, you know, uh, more of a regional impact with multiple towns advocating for something um, carries a lot more weight. So that's kind of one of the benefits to doing that. A, you can coordinate it and get it so it, it's, you know, as good as you can get it. But B, the joint effort carries weight in the 10 year plan ranking process. Um, and then the second one under this is consider um, projects funded under Hearts Corners TIF district. So this before is kind of where we're talking. Before you I'm move sorry. on, like, the, the coordinate with Henniker piece of that, like what, what have you seen? What does that look like? I think it would probably be, you know, the main elements are transportation, how the zoning kind of interfaces in, in one town versus another, are they close? This is an exercise that we started in um, Allentown and Pembroke as well for Suncook um, to, to get a similar thing where, you know, you kind of create a destination that just happens to be split by a, um, a municipal boundary, but, that's kind of a coordination piece, but also transportation elements, people going through there because it's a state highway, um, any infrastructure needs, uh, things like that. So I think it could be very specific in those regards to just kind of reach out on, on you know, one, two, three, four zoning, uh, traffic, uh, lobbying the state for, for things that um, both towns would like to see in that area. <clears throat> So would that be better if we actually had more specific items listed there? I think that would at least help me think about um, short-term kind of next steps okay. that, that um, you kind of see is what needs to happen. So yeah, but I'm, I'm speaking for myself. I don't know if others feel like that level of detail is, is not, not helpful, but. Um, and I think from a master plan standpoint, you know, to have coordinate is one thing and you say could include, right? So you're not kind of pigeoning, pigeonholing the town, but you're kind of given a range of, of things that that can include. But at the same time, you're given some concrete items that um, we can, we can take and, and work with. Um, zoning, transportation, infrastructure. I think those are probably the big ones. Um, I think if we're going to be looping in, I know Tom commented as well in the um, chat, if we're going to be looping in another town, being as specific as possible with what our ask is or what we're looking for um, would be better. Otherwise, we'll just sit around staring at each other. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah, but I, I think that's kind of the idea is you look at the development for that area and you, you want to, those are the pieces you would consider. Um, but yeah, we can definitely do that. And I think I'll just make a general note to um, provide specifics where possible um, in the guise of including but not limited to because it's, you know, um, a master plan element. And I, I mean, I, I think I hear what you're saying, Matt, that there's kind of two uses for this document. One is to inform the master plan <laughs> chapter and yeah. then and then the other is to provide some direction to the EDC and other Hopkinton boards about how to how to get from A to B you know what I mean yeah. yes um, and so maybe maybe I don't know if that means there's two versions of this or if this just gets longer because there's a little more detail that's that's added to flesh it out a little bit um, but I, I do hear that, you know, in a master plan context, you know, you don't necessarily want such concrete steps in there. Um, but for our purposes, I mean, I, I think it would be really helpful for, for this board to have um, kind of more of a roadmap of how we get from, from here to there. Yeah, I think we could do that. I mean, and we could do, you know, the dual, um, the dual version, that may be a, a good way to go. 
Um, so we keep these as the general descriptions in, in the master plan. And then our own version has the more specific elements. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, I agree with that. Cause I think if we're talking about a strategic plan, we don't want to get too fine grained about it. Um, yep. And so I think two documents is probably a good idea. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, yeah, so I think that's what I will do, but I will make the notes on kind of the specifics and have two versions. And I would probably, Matt, you know, to the extent you can identify more concrete details, I would add those for any of these short-term bullets. <clears throat> Yeah. Excuse me, for the same reason, you know. Okay. Version EC specific um, to short terms and specifics. Okay, got that. Okay. Um, and this next one here, which is the uh, uh, consider potential projects for the TIF district. That it's kind of an interesting thing where, you know, we've got our TIF committee that we're trying to get set up and they're going to manage and administer that. But the EDC does play a role in that and that we're kind of advocating for specific things that we, we may see um, to help us with economic development. So they kind of take that ball for us and run with it from a financial standpoint. <clears throat> is there any projects uh just kind of quickly on that potential uh topic that just kind of thinking out loud on, on the project side uh you mean projects that what do you mean potential projects there's none that have been um, that, so that, far. right but i'm thinking like potential ones for the hearts corner tiff district that it, future projects that we could we could do I mean, the, the, I think the, the pie in the sky thinking was some sort of a mixed use development over there. Um, okay. Ideally either priced or restricted so that um, the number of the school enrollment didn't go up drastically as a result. Gotcha. Okay. And I know there's been discussion of TIF money if there is such a development to, to provide some of the infrastructure, whether that's roads, whether it's water, sewer, those, those types of things in that area. Right, and that's where build out analysis stuff can help too. Um, I see that, that Tom has asked about whether we've had any um, specific discussions with Henniker as of yet on the um, At, around Hearts Corner. Yeah, yeah. So the, I mean, the only thing that I know of is that joint meeting about the, um, what was it, the 10-year plan, our select boards met about that intersection and the sort of safety and planning of the redesign um, of that intersection. Yeah, so that was, that was pre-COVID, obviously. Um, because we hosted it at our town hall, but the members of the Henniker Select Board, Henniker Planning Board, and Henniker Economic Development Committee all attended, and there was a presentation given by DOT on this biennial 10-year transportation improvement plan, um, and they, they presented, and we both, members of both towns, gave feedback on uh, the various um, kind of ideas that DOT was kicking around. And, and that is, I, nothing has happened on that since then. Um, Neil, are you aware of any kind of updates on that process? It, it's still in the, the plan. And I think um, surveying and engineering is in process right now. I know they were doing surveying there, so. Okay, okay. So to Tom, to your question, I mean, at that, at that meeting, there seemed to be a, a joint commitment for the two towns to stay in touch with one another um, and also to continue to provide input to DOT. Um, but it, it might, sounds like there won't be 
really a concrete opportunity to do more until that engineering and surveying is done because that'll define better define what the real options are on the ground uh, for that intersection. And that meeting was a follow up to a very similar meeting. It may have been two years before when they were doing the 10 year plan then that happened in Henniker. Um, same type of meeting looking at that plan and that had some success because the, the um, intersection work was actually moved up a year. Yeah. So Matt, okay. does that answer your question at all? It does, and I can kind of working with these um, these notes I have here. Um, these three sub bullets, I can kind of work through that and, and get some more uh, specifics. Um, I think the other. More, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just on the idea of like what are specific projects at that area. Um, some of the things that came out of the surveys that the MTAG group mm. did were like recreational opportunities. Um, you know, people envisioned like, uh, you know, a, net, a trail network or um, the river's right there. So maybe another opportunity for launching canoes and I mean, people liked some of the, and, and you've probably seen the stuff that Stu Arnett put together, but some of the ideas that people that resonated with folks were like um, Artisans Park in Windsor, Vermont, which is where, who's there? Harpoon has a brewery there and like Simon uh. Pierce has, a, I don't know, it's, it's, there's sort of a, there, there's a art plus beer <laughs> plus outdoor because it's on the river. I mean, it, it's all the things you want, right? Um, so yeah. it's that kind of sort of regional draw, um, multi-use com commercial space, plus the idea that Stephen already mentioned around okay. sort of um, more dense, uh, higher numbers of smaller um, home types. So, but you know, it's all that's all okay. like okay. private market stuff. Like, if the, I don't know how we necessarily facilitate that happening, but those are ideas that were. I, got positive I mean, yeah, I mean, I I think at the most basic level, you look at. A build out analysis helps you get an understanding of how the zoning is going to function. And then that will tell you if you need to, to adjust the zoning. Could be, hey, you know, the density looks okay, or we need to adjust the minimum lot size up or down to get, a, get more or less from a density standpoint. But also looking at the uses that are permitted, do those work? Um, for Allenstown, when they did that uh, 10 years ago um, for Suncook, their entire village had all their sewer, all their water, all their existing infrastructure, but it was all zoned residential. And they had an ability to get some more density out of that too. So then it was the, the thought process was, well, what kind of, you know, we need to carve out some non-residential. And, and they kind of went through the, the, the process of identifying kind of the village zoning, you know, first floor commercial, small scale, um, and then you could do, uh, you know, residential above and, and those kinds of things. Um, so I think, you know, some of those exercises will be helpful to identify those concrete zoning changes, infrastructure, maybe a cell communications, you know, those kinds of things. But, um, okay, that helps. Um, okay. So that was promote mixed use development opportunities um, in West Hopkinton. So anything else we wanna to add to that on the short-term side that you guys can think of? Nope. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next one, um, promote the availability and use of exit six uh, ERZ zone to the property business owners. So ERZ zone is good to go. An update on that, we're all ready. Uh, the cards, the postcards went out. There's about 35 or so that went out. So we should be all set uh, next week on the 12th. 
to be up and running. And just a quick update, Karen sent me an email today or yesterday about the planning board. They're having their first public hearing on zoning changes on the 12th as well. And their second one is the 26th if they need it. But um, we should be all set to basically, you know, work with the state and um, have that um, promotion take place. So we can kind of almost check that one off the list um, here right out of the gate. Um, the next one. I wonder if while, while we're on exit six, there, there's actually property for sale at exit six. Um, and we do have TIF money for there and we have the plan for sewer and water. So it's probably it is a good time and I think I think the owner, the current owners are aware of that. We've made them aware of that, but there may be some work that needs to be done there, helping promote the sale of that land and seeing what, what could be provided through the TIF district or all, all of that to provide some, infra, uh, some additional infrastructure that might make that site even more um, enticing to a business. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I'm curious if they're going to be. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, what was the name of that uh, property owner, Neil? Uh, it's actually owned. It's it's owned by whatever the address is, is the business, but it's Brian Pellerin. Hmm. Okay. And, and Brian has been part of development before. He's, he's also been on the select board um, and lives not too far away on Dolly Road. So okay. I, can, I can give you more information on him. Yeah, because I want to... I wanna... there, there, yeah, if you could, that'd be great. Um, they're, they're always a little close to the vest with information and... Um, and we, we had conversations with, with Brian about uh, joining the, the TIF district advisory board and he's has did not commit and probably won't commit to that. Okay. I mean, I think it's so I kind of want to touch on that too, just to kind of remind everybody we were talking kind of after the mid month, I'm going to start doing those calls. So um, I, I still might want to talk to him if he's, you know, there could be a place for him. I don't think, do you get the sense that if he was comfortable that he wouldn't be kind of sharing stuff um, as opposed to more steering, um, basically project selection and, and things like that, that may be more appealing to him? Yeah, I, I, I think he'll, he'd have a good conversation. So I'll send you his contact information. And, um, okay. That, that's yeah, probably I'm in for that, that'll way. work. Okay, definitely. Awesome. Number, okay. Um, okay, and then moving on to 79E. So those applications should be all set and ready to go. Um, and one thing I know, I think we've talked about it in the past is I, uh, I, I like to have a good map that shows them both kind of together and have that on the website um, so people can see, you know, hey, we've got multiple areas um, for economic development. Um, and that's basically how we will promote that um, and maybe reach out to, to some people as well. Uh, Okay. So now I'm on review recommendations of the 2000 uh, Village Charette and consider updating plans recommendations within that to promote future investment in mixed use. Um, so to me, I, I think that's more looking at um, build out as well. Um, check the zoning, check those other elements too. Um, to just see, does that vision, is it still able to be built out or is it able to be built out um, as that, as that uh, charrette prescribed? Um, 
The next one here is examine options in the Burnham Interville uh, zone. Um, looking at the uses again. Um, that one's pretty straightforward. And making That's sure that it. those uses, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was just asking Anna or Jim if, if the, or, well, Greg's not really here, but if the zoning review that just occurred was broad enough to look at Burnham Intervale, or is that going to be for some other time? So we looked at all, we looked at the entire table, all zones. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably M1 is the zone with probably the fewest actual changes. Would you say that? Would you think that's right, Jim? I, I think that's correct. Yeah, um, but, but we did look across the board at everything and update uh, definitions throughout. Um, but I, so I, um, Matt, is this one also kind of premised on having a build out to look at? It, it really does drive a lot of things because a build out is helpful in capturing, you know, like here's what your zoning is going to do. And then from there you can decide, is that what we want? Yeah. Do we want to make an adjustment one way or the other? Um, but also too, to look at like the, the cluster analysis piece, when um, you look at the industries and where we're strong at economically and, and kind of where the economy is going, which usually, you know, you can go look at the state and they've got those um, analysis by industry and things like that. Um, you can kind of see where the growth is coming, but with COVID, it's kind of like a curveball. Whereas, you know, two years ago, they may have done an analysis that, for instance, it shows restaurants, you know, as a growth industry, just making something up. And then you look at it now and like, well, okay, COVID's kind of had an impact on that. So it becomes kind of tricky, but I think the, the build out and the zoning analysis, it's all about looking at it to see if as it plays out now, as we have it on paper, is that what we want? And do we need to adjust is really what that does. And the charrette itself kind of gives a target, right? Kind of using the analogy of when we were talking about the, the phrase that we we're working on visioning and the gap between that and, and what Jim was talking about. The target will help you identify the gap and you can kind of um, then adjust your zoning from there. Um, but, to me, I see them as kind of together to kind of identify what specific steps do we need to do to work on, on making those changes. Yep. Um, okay. Consider future adoption of the Commercial Industrial um, Construction Exemption Act. So that's like 79E, but it's for um, um, all, so I've got to, all certain zones and I've got, so the RSA, if, if and I probably should have sent this to you guys, but it's 7280 to 83. And it's, let's see here. Um, you can do it for up to 10 years. It's similar to, to 7090, but just think more commercial industrial. Their growth, their expansion, up to 10 years, there's a, um, an ability to do some relief there. And, and again, I, you know, include that in the 79E and ERZ promotion effort too. Um, and the last thing we had on the short-term projects, EDC website, obviously that's on going, um, the selectnh.com piece, um, business retention, expansion and recruitment program, uh, and then look at the funding infrastructures for water in infrastructure study and improvements, potentially in coordination with Exit 6 and the, the Hearts Corner TIF funding. Um, and I know last time, too, we talked about the grants, uh, exploring grants. So that would kind of be part of that effort um, to kind of um, lay out those funding options. My, my understanding of... Hart's Corner is that, you know, water, water and sewer is not going to be via 
any town infrastructure. It's going to be well water. Um, the sewer is going to be, um, you know, a leach field or something like that, or a community well or something, just because it's so far from physically far uh, from the sewer and water infrastructure that's much closer to exit six. Yeah. And, and that, yeah, that's, that's one of the realities that we have to contend with, with, you know, the more rural areas and, and things like that. Um, yeah. I mean, that could be what we're dealing with. And, and in that case, you know, you're going to need larger lot sizes um, and different zoning considerations to make sure you can accommodate that and a septic, um, maybe there's the ability to have shared septic and shared well for a couple of businesses that can, can be a solution too. Um, but I'll make note of that. Me, too far. Okay. One, one, other, <coughs> one other question, Matt, before you go to long-term. Yep. What is a business retention expansion recruitment program? So in that, you kind of want to, so kind of working from the, the retention side first, I think you want to get into kind of serving, surveying your existing businesses to kind of see what they're dealing with, with, with challenges. That's one of the hardest parts of economic development is to figure out how to keep and, and you really can't measure that one either, right? You can't tell if, if somebody's chosen not to leave because of X. Right. So we really need to talk to the existing businesses. That's kind of where that, that piece comes from. Um, the expansion and recruitment, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Is that communication in the form of like a survey that goes out? Is it, you know, more yep. kind of informal communications? Like how, how, Kind of practically speaking, like how do we ensure those lines of communication are open? There's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, you can do surveys, which is helpful, but you can also do just kind of like meet and greet type things. Okay. We did that in Pittsfield with a few of our, our businesses in town. We'd periodically invite them in and, and talk to them and just try and get, get a handle on what are the challenges they're dealing with. Maybe it's telecoms, maybe it's um, commutes. Maybe maybe everything's working well, and we can identify like uh, something that we can actually um, highlight as an asset. Um, you know, in, in a COVID environment, maybe the the more rural atmosphere or um, you know things like that are are attractive, and we can focus on that. But it's really about trying to understand what challenges are they dealing with, and how can we help them and advocate for them and uh, things like that. Maybe it's something, uh, you know, planning board process related where they need some more predictability on X um, and kind of show them what we've been up to too, right? You know, hey, we've got all these great tools. We've got 79E, we've got the ERZ tax credit, we've got the um, the other one, the, uh, the commercial um, and industrial exemption um, and these things. And that information that we're providing to them may help them make the decision to stay. Um, if they are dealing with something. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Sure. Um, and on the expansion recruitment side, I think that can kind of like help us understand that piece too. Um, but also we want to be able to do the promotional aspect of things in the marketing um, and, and make sure that our zoning is going to fit kind of the target industries we're looking for um, in the areas that we want to expand um, and, and things like that, and just kind of get a handle on what do we need to do to make sure that we're accommodating the businesses that want to stay, um, to make that decision easier for them, but also how can we accommodate and make the decision easier for those wanting to move in? Um, let's see here. And then on the long term side, we've just got, whoops. We've got the first one, which is the, the water sewer uh, improvements feasibility analysis um, and other potential improvements. And that's where we, you know, again, kind of taking that further um, on the study side of things. As a, for instance, we had in Epsom in 1994, they had in their master plan um, a discussion on sewer and water expansion. 
1994. They went through this same exact process where they, you know, they had to do studies, they, you know, all kinds of things. And they're finally in a position where they're getting close to making it a reality. Um, and Mike will, <laughs> he likes to, to cite this as a project to show how long it can take. And you do need these studies to do the, the feasibility work, like what you were describing earlier, Stephen, with, you know, can we do it? Um, and, and those kinds of things. And Neil, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't we do something similar to that in your exit six already? You're, you're muted, Neil. Sorry about that. We have a conceptual engineering plan for up to exit six at it at an S to do that plan would be an estimated cost of about a million dollars. It's about an additional million to go across 89. Um, but we do have a plan where where pipes would go, where pumping stations would be needed. Um, and at that point, our, our uh, facility is was is large enough to handle that expansion. So we, we do have those plans, very conceptual, but they were done by engineers and, and set up, so. Yeah. Is that the same or different than a feasibility analysis? It, it they, they kind of progress. They get more specific as you go. Um, you know, like Neil said, it's a high level, just kind of looking at it. Once they get into the actual planning of, you know, the, the construction work and, and all that, that whole spectrum has gone from, maybe it's phasing, right? Um, they start saying, hey, here's the whole length of the project. Here's how far we gotta go. Pump station here and here. Um, and then the, the effort could get into the phasing and how do we actually do it? And then from there, you're able to, you know, make a better, um, estimate of how and um, where to go for the funding for the grants, you know, hey, it's X dollars and maybe we can, uh, you know, have the 20% match, we'll do that from town meeting. And then for instance, go to uh, USDA rural development for the first phase with the 20% match and that gets us there and then okay. kind of build up. Yeah. Okay. So, but it does, it just kind of like, like a layered cake, they just get more as they go down, there's more layers and they're more detailed and the engineers work their magic. <laughs> um, um, but yeah. Would it be helpful for you? Have you seen the conceptual plan, Matt? I, I have not. Um, I, I'd love to take a look at it. Yeah, definitely. Um, Neil, can you, can you send that to? I, I will do that. Okay, thank you. Cool. Thanks. Um, Okay, and then the last thing we have on here, and I'll give a little update on Brownfields too while we're here. Um, investigate implying, applying to the Planning Commission for Brownfields assessment money for the former bioenergy site. So what is all that? So um, we have at the Planning Commission, we've gotten two back-to-back -back grants now to do assessment money for Brownfields cleanup. And what that means is the first time we got 400 grand the second time we got 300 grand. We've applied for another 300 grand back in October. So hopefully um, we'll, we'll see that at some point. I hope we get it. <laughs> um, but the assessment process is where you start before you can get the cleanup funds. Um, and it consists of two phases, phase one, phase two. Phase one work is kind of library research, pulling things from the town hall, looking at site plans, the um, what it, the Sanborn fire maps, historical data, right? And what that does is it gives you a broad overview of the potential contaminants on the site. For instance, you could have a scenario where that particular phase one research says, hey, it was a, um, uh, they made electrical components and now they, and, and then their last business was a dry cleaner. And then it will give you potential contaminants and it'll tell you, oh yeah, you know, it was up there on that hill and It'll give the, the engineers when they do their phase one, phase two scope of work, an idea of where to test water, where to punch holes in the ground to do their soil tests, things like that, and what to look for. So that's the phase two work is when they actually start punching holes and doing testing. So phase one, phase two, then you get into phase three, which is kind of what they call the, the reuse planning. Once you've gone through all those phases, then you can get your, um, your cleanup money 
and get the property cleaned up and reused. We, our brownfields program covers kind of all the, the first three phases, right? The, um, and it's all strictly EPA money. So no money actually comes out of the planning commission's pocket. Um, no money has to come out of the pocket of, of the landowner or, if, you know, uh, the town if the town owns it. And it's, a, it's necessary too, because the stigma with a brownfields property. So the definition of brownfields by EPA, it's a property that is or is perceived to be contaminated. And the stigma is what's preventing it from being sold because once you get into that chain of title, you're liable, right? You become liable once you buy it. Um, and the brownfields process can help alleviate some of that um, and basically move it from, you know, uh, stuck in the mud, <laughs> you know, site in disrepair to that cleanup. So that's that's why that's in there. Um, as of right now, uh, we're kind of at the back end of our second grant from a fund standpoint. And then we're gonna hopefully get the next one here in a few months, they'll announce, and then we'll get our next round of funding to do more properties. Um, but that's kind of Brownfields in a nutshell. It's not a, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big program. <laughs> um, but those are the two long-term projects that we've got here. So post, Post 2022. Um, any thoughts, anything beyond that? I mean, a lot of this is front loaded over the next year. Um, and yeah. Matt, following up on the conversation we had earlier about Hopkinton Village and kind of thinking about promoting development there, I mean, where does that fit in with these? Is that like a short term or a long term? I mean, where do you think that would fit in? Well, I think, let me go back through here. I mean, I think I see a lot of the village work as kind of, I mean, that really should be short term, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, you know, to, it's, it's the same thing. It's what are the growth industries that the state's in, you know, from the economic data? What does our zoning say? What is, what is our, our build out potential? And then to kind of go from there. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I think Jim's Jim's kind of remarks are are well taken. That you know that is an area that you know we don't really think of, um, and maybe there are some physical limitations on the the ability to develop that further. But if the limitations are not physical, you know, if there's um, I don't know regulatory roadblocks that are yeah now unattractive to us, you know, it would be it would be helpful to know that. Yep. Yep. I agree. And, and you get into the development constraints too. Um, ledge sewer water, um, the brownfields can be a part of that with older buildings in a village too. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we do in, in the um, brownfields program is the, it's part of the phase two work. It's hazardous building um, materials survey, right? And they just go in, hey, you know, here's lead paint, there's asbestos, there's this, there's that. And that can be part of that effort too, to kind of help identify those challenges. But yeah, I mean, I think Hopkinton Village Redevelopment, um, so to me, that's build out and zoning, uh, looking at the zoning there as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, development constraints. And to me, the development constraints is all part of that build out work too. Right. One thing too, just kind of thinking about Suncook um, and thinking um, about villages in general is you, you look at your zoning and your density and you really, and we, this just kind of happened in Chichester too, is you look at your village and you say, do we want more density? Because that will mean more businesses, more space, right? And that's partially governed by the physical area, but it's also governed by the zoning, what's allowed. So it's just really important to say, because for Allen Sound, they were able to say, yeah, we can like reduce, and they did like a form-based code, which is basically whole buildings to the street um, were less concerned. It was partially form-based code because they did want the, the small villagey 
type businesses and, and second and third floor residential. But the bulk of that ordinance focuses on the physical built environment, walkability, increasing density, and those things with the eye of making it, knowing it's gonna make it more dense and bring in more. And, and mm -hmm. that's, that's a planning board's purview to say, yeah, we're gonna write a zoning ordinance that increases the density in a, in a particular area, but it's important, I think, to be informed about that and kind of say, hey guys, EDC thinks if you did go down that path, you could get you know 10% more density, which could be 10% more you know uh, business, which it's um, a reuse of roads. You don't need to do new roads. You don't need to deal with all these other areas that come with what they call greenfield development. Right. So, so I, I want to well thank you, Matt. By the way, for putting this together and and walking us through it. Um, this is great, and I, I want to open it up to the board for any of their comments or thoughts about this and kind of the discussion we just had. I have a couple of um, things that I'd like to um, suggest, but I wanna, I wanna let the other board members uh, jump in first. So if anybody has any, any thoughts or questions, Matt, did you, is there something else you wanna say? I did, and Sorry, one Matt. thing that Mike, Mike had offered up this afternoon is he could come and talk specifically about a 9202 build out analysis and the UPWP thing in, in, at the next meeting in February, if, if you guys are interested. And what is that, a 9202 build out? Can you just tell us what that is? Um, so it would be a build out analysis of that area. Um, oh, got it. Hi, okay, sorry. The numbers yep. <laughs> had no relevance to me, sorry. I'm all of, I'm a non-linear person, so yeah. I'm like, you know, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> so a build out, you want me to tell me what area that is that, that Mike is, is suggesting? Um, it would be the area of kind of nine and 202. Where is he? Uh, you know what? I got to sort back through here. Um, at the very least, we could have him come talk build outs and the UPWP thing in general. Right. Um, UPWP meaning to have Mike Fignali come and, and do some work under those funds provided by the state to, to look at some transportation issues. <clears throat> Anything else, Matt? Nope. I think okay. that's about it for now. Yeah. I didn't want to cut you off again. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so, <laughs> all right. So now I'm going to ask if there are any board members that, um, have any suggestions or comments or, or yeah. So anybody have anything you want to say? I, I really, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go for it, Jim. Oh, okay. I was just going to say, I, I really appreciated this. And I, I also, um, I liked the walkthrough. I had highlighted the develop a business retention expansion recruitment program. I think that was one thing that really jumped out at me. Um, you know, it, it seems like, I like that you can see how you, laid the groundwork for a lot. Um, but I think that creating that plan is really going to be what helps um, continue this on into the future. So we don't find ourselves back in this position, you know, in yep. 15 years. So thank you. Sure. And and one thing, Allenstown and, and um, Pittsfield, you know, the economic development chapter becomes a standalone just kind of pull it out of the master plan and EDC sits down. And in those particular cases, I actually created like a spreadsheet. It's like this item, this is when it's done. This is who's responsible and go like, like that level of, um, you know, here's our to-do list. You're sitting at the meeting, you know, the agenda writes itself in a way, right? You're like, we, okay, tonight we're going to do this. And then they just, it, it forces the, the direction i think so i'm glad to hear that thank you yeah this is jim i would just echo the same comments that andrea and uh, stephen mentioned this is a very good starting point for a, a strategic plan and i think the one area to add into it would be uh, uh something about the hopkinton village area yeah on the short term side right well, I think we also could could talk about um, at least put a mention of the uh, exit four gateway. Mm -hmm. 
should be in this as to whether or not there's going to be some sort of um, development there, whether it be uh, green space for a um, starting point for trails and, and, and such, or whether it's going to have some other kind of um, business to commercial aspect to it. Do you see that as a, a short term or a long term, Jim? The exit I think that's area. probably, I'm sorry, I think that's probably long term because you're going to have to get money in the 10 year plan to redo the exit. Okay. Yeah. And part of the visioning there is do you want to figure out some way, some way to make this a more welcoming uh, entry into Hopkinton Village? Or do you want to just leave it pretty much green, green space? Right. And just kind of, I want to touch base. And I think it's because last month we actually did, or was it November? All the, the months are blurring lately. But we actually did a, um, a ranking program for UPWP projects. And one of the elements is, are those included in local plans, right? Local plans, so these are local buy-in. So what Jim is saying here is good. If we have that in here and it's included, it, it literally translates to more points in the ranking. So yeah. that's, that's good. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. It helps to reaffirm that, that uh, we have an interest in doing it. It's not simply stuck in the 10-year plan, but there's actually a strategic plan that yep. includes that as well. And, and good. And again, don't forget Epsom 1994 sewer and water expansion. And yeah. now it's finally, you know, starting to come to reality. That's only took 18 in years. High school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's they're moving along. They, they get there. And that's the thing with EDC. It's a slog. And looking at the, the, the um, Suncook Village stuff, 10 years, they just now got their, their big mill redevelopment. Just now, I think they're they're, they're hitting it pretty hard right now this spring. Thank God they don't have to do too much foundation work in the, in the frozen weather, but keep them in the plans and keep pushing them forward every time you update a plan. Yep. Anybody else have any, any feedback for Matt? Okay, so Matt and my, and jump yeah. in if anybody does. I Sorry. just want to say Anna. thanks, Matt, for your work on this. And, and I feel like you really have hit all of the important things that we've been talking about and working on um, over the past, I mean, for me, a few years, for others, you know, 20 plus years. Um, and I would love to, the, the one like specific thing um, that I was just looking, re-looking at the document again, um, and sorry for the background noise, people are watching TV. Um, uh, the, the bit about Kentuc the Kentucook Village um, review the recommendations included in the 2000 Kentucky Village Charette, consider updating select plans and recommendations. I'd like to like make that more concrete and definite. Like let's definitely not consider, let's not consider it. <laughs> like, let's, let's really do that. Let's, let's dial in. I'd really love to, cause I think there are, because it's already sort of the economic engine in so many ways, I think there are some really specific and I'm not going to say simple, but sort of um, single focus type things that we can do. I'm not going to call them low hanging fruit either because they're not easy. But um, I think, you know, for focus, just to dial in a little bit on, on the village um, more concretely would, I think it might, would be great. Yeah, I agree with Anna because you've got to tie in the uh, traffic issues or, uh, on both sides of the bridge in Kuntukuk if you're going to do any kind of um, economic or business development out towards Burnham Intervale. You've got to figure out how you're going to manage that traffic. Yeah, it's definitely a bottleneck, like both physically and sort of like psychologically, I think the village. Um, so, yeah. And, and I think if we get Mike here, um, I like to overpromise stuff that my peers back at the office can't answer to while I'm here. Um, so let's let's see. You know, um, talk to Mike about that and see. You know, can we do that under UPWP too? I always volunteer Craig to make maps. 
especially when he's not here. So that's great. Thanks, Anna. Um, so, so Matt, my I, I agree with what's been said already about adding a little more detail in the spots that we've already talked about. So, just want to echo those comments. Um, the okay. other thing that jumps out to me from this discussion is, I guess, the need for an updated build out analysis, because that that really seems to inform so much of what's in this document. And so I, I certainly would be in favor of, um, you know, doing what we need to do to get that, make that happen. Um, and if that means that, you know, we need to schedule a time for Mike to come and chat with us and talk about UPW or have your colleague um, do some maps or, or both. I mean, I, I, don't, it, I don't quite understand the difference between those two, um, but okay. I almost don't care. I want all the maps and yeah. all the build outs um, yeah. because I think they're all, they're just so useful, it seems like. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm including in that, you know, the, the 79 e ERZ map uh, because I think that is um, a really, or could be a really useful um, marketing tool uh, that, that business owners may not be aware of in town. Um, and so oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. so whatever we need to do to, to do that, I, I'm, I'm in favor of. And it, just a, a lesson learned thing on the maps, just on uh, ERZ and, and 79E, Pittsfield, they had those in place for years and were like, hey, we got these great tools. Nobody used them. Nobody used them. Nobody used them. And then a building burned down, a business burned. And that was the opportunity. I think the town administrator reached out and said, hey, you're in the middle of this, uh, you know, this tax incentive zone, please apply, take advantage of this while you're rebuilding. Cause you're going to rebuild a little bigger. Right. Um, and yeah. And that was early on when 79E was around. So there was a learning curve for a lot of people with that. Um, but yeah, the maps are key because when you can actually look at a property and see how the, the tax incentive is stacked on top of it and, Oh yeah, I got this, I got that. And it becomes more visual and more exciting, I think. So, all right. Anybody have anything else for Matt on the strategic plan? No. I just want to share, Matt, that Tom chimed in on the comments, and he he really thought it was a great start. So, I uh, just wanted to make you aware of that. Thank you, and this is great feedback, guys. This is very very helpful. So, so I I think you had mentioned earlier. Um, Kind of posing a question about how far we can get on the the plan and it seems like to me that you know we're not in a position to adopt anything yet and if any of the board members disagree jump in but it sounds like there's a little more refining that needs to happen um, and so if you could work on that and then kind of come back to us at the next meeting um, sure. that'd be awesome and and hopefully we'll be a little closer to um, adopting it does that does that make sense matt yeah, and, and we may have, you know, another back and forth, kind of like what we're having with the visioning session thing, too. Sure. So, yeah. Um, any, but yeah, any no board members disagree with, with that approach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's great. Um, okay. Well, I think we've, we've kind of um, finished that discussion. So, Matt, do you have anything else on this or? Um, with my notes, I don't believe I do. Okay. Uh, so did you want Mike at the February meeting or after like a, a future undisclosed one? Uh, February would be awesome. I don't know what, what date that is yet. Um, uh, we'll do that at the end of this meeting, but, um, yeah, I mean, the sooner, the sooner the, the schedules line up, uh, would be great just to get it in the works. All right. Okay. Okay. So uh, we don't have any new business. Uh, next is updates. And Matt, it, I, I have listed here the TIF district board and the ERZ workshop. Um, you've already mentioned both of these a little bit. I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to say about the TIF district board or the ERZ workshop. Um, just, just to reiterate, you know, kind of after mid month, like maybe the last two weeks of the month, uh, start calling on the, on the TIF district, just kind of following up 
where we sent the cards out uh, or the, the letters out. <laughs> Um, and, and yeah, the ERZ workshop should be, should be pretty good and get, start that promotional stuff too, because that actually ties back into that, uh, business retention thing as well. Those are yep. existing landowners. They're here. We're telling them about this, this tool and we're starting that conversation. So if we can kind of like have another follow-up sometime, like maybe eight months later, Hey, we have another topic we want to talk to you guys about. And it kind of lay that foundation at this meeting pass some good info to them and then kind of keep those contacts rolling. <laughs> yep. That sounds good. And, and just for everyone's benefit, can you remind everyone um, of the, when the ERZ workshop is next week? Um, Tuesday, I yep. believe. Yeah, it's the 12th and I'm going right to my calendar here to verify the date. January 12th at 530. Okay. <laughs> That'll be virtual. Um, and I'm drawing the blank on, on the woman's name, but uh, the woman from the state who Bridget. runs the program is going to be presenting. So. Excuse me. Bridget, I think. Yes. Yes, that's it. Thank you. <clears throat> so that, I, I've said this before, but just to say it again, I mean, that's not intended as a an EDC meeting. That's This is really a workshop for, you know, business owners to uh, communicate with Bridget. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try to participate and just be there. And I'd invite other EDC members to as well, if your time permits it, but it's not, you know, it's not going to be posted as, or I don't think it'll be posted as a public meeting and there's no agenda for the EDC to do anything. It's really just for business owners to ask questions and for Bridget to answer them. That's it. Yeah, it is, but I think that we should probably, at least in their minds, make sure they walk out of there with a connection to the EDC as, you know, kind of sponsoring, or I don't know, sponsoring is the right word, but. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I can, I can, we can figure that out. I'm happy to, you know, give a 20 second introduction and then turn it over to Bridget um, yeah, I think just that to make that connection. Yeah. Because that way we can leverage it in the future for other meetings and, and other things. So. Yep. Yep, that's no problem. Um, okay, so last on the update list is uh, land swap. And I'm guessing this is a Neil update. Is, we have not as much progress as I want, but a little progress. We received the deeds today and the plan from the state um, Tim and I are both reviewing that. Um, we'll get back to the state probably tomorrow, so we can keep this moving, but I think we have a plan. They had to get one more approval before we could um, file it with the Registry of Deeds, but um, we are pretty close, and as soon as that, that's really the last hurdle, and then a closing date can be set, so. What was the extra approval? Um, there's a plan that was done, and it was an engineering plan, but it wasn't stamped. So they're getting it stamped so it can be recorded and they needed to go through their legal people to be able to stamp that. But the plan is done and it's there and we have a copy of it. Um, it just needs to be at the point where it could be recorded. Okay. okay. We were afraid we would end up down the road with issues if we didn't have all this done correctly now. Yeah, no, no. So. Let's not do it again. I'm, I'm all in favor of <laughs> doing it right the first time. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Thanks, Neil. Um, so next up is next meeting date. <clears throat> so let's see. We have been doing Tuesdays. <clears throat> that seems to work better. Um, what's the planning board schedule in February? Same day as the easy, easy workshop. In February? Oh, I'm sorry, February, I'm sorry. Uh, the 9th. Okay, so we wanna avoid the 9th. Um, let's see. How's the 16th look? Yeah, I'd say the 2nd or the 16th. The 16th is a select board meeting because the 15th is a holiday, so. How about the 2nd? That'd be a, a month, a month from today. I, I'm looking at my calendar and it looks like I've got Epsom that night. 
Okay. Um, there's the ninth. The ninth is the planning board oh. meeting. Yeah. Oh, and that's election day. Never mind. <clears throat> oh no, that's a month early. Never mind. <laughs> well, how about Monday the eighth or Tuesday the tenth? Or Wednesday the tenth, I mean. Yep, eighth and eighth or tenth. Could I? I would just suggest the eighth because I got Deering on the tenth. Yep, let's do the eighth then. <clears throat> okay. um, does the six o'clock time work pretty well for everyone? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's say uh, Monday, February 8th, six o'clock. Sounds good to me. Awesome. <clears throat> okay, um, our last order of business is a non public. Um, and just want to let the public know. Oh, hold on. Tom says Monday the 8th at 6 works for him. That's excellent. Thank you, Tom. Um, so the want to let the public know, and by the public, I mean, let's see, all those people that will be watching this uh, recording at their convenience, because we don't have any members of the public, um, that will be going into non-public. Um, we will not be conducting any business when we are done with non-public, and we will be adjourning. Um, so I will make a motion uh, to go into non-public. Uh, where is it? I'll second it. Oh, hold on. Don't second it yet. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> motion, thank you. No, motion to go into non-public uh, under 91A uh, colon three, two little C for reputation. Uh, Jim, do you still want to second that? Yes, I do. Okay, so roll call vote. Uh, Stephen is a yes. Meredith? Yes. Okay, Andrea? Andrea Folsom, yes. Uh, Anna? Yes. Uh, and Jim? <clears throat> yes. And Tom? Um, <clears throat> yes, too. Tom gives a yes, too. Okay, so thank you, Matt. We will see you next month. Um, and thanks again. And Greg, I guess we'll stick around via phone. And uh, I think that's actually Tom. Oh, is that Tom? Well, we have yeah. a, Tom I've got him listed. He comes up twice else. for me. Right. But I think I'm pretty sure that's Tom's number, the 5853. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Happy New Year to Wait. you. Oh, it is. Yeah. Tom says that is him. Okay. Oh. That's good. We confirmed it. Um, yeah, Neil, if you can let me know when we stop recording.